Hey guys, Ramblin' Bob here again with another product look at, first time look on the internet here. Uh, I saw this on a few other channels and I just wanted to bring it to the attention of more people. I think this is uh, a very, very big uh, update for portable solar panels. Now, a lot of times when you deal with solar panels, you always have the ones that are either a little bit not uh, not strong enough, you know what I mean? Like you got to bring them in during the storms and the weather and stuff. And this might be uh, a whole new design here, which I think it is. Uh, it's basically, if you guys remember, I used to, uh, well, I still do. I talk um, very much about the Thunderbolt 100 panels from Harbor Freight. And this is kind of like that is where, you know, they have that briefcase that folds up. And, uh, but it doesn't have as high as IP rating. This has an actual IP rating of IP67. That's very good. That means that technically this whole panel can literally fall into the water up to about three feet for like 30 seconds or something like that. And uh, you could take it out, dry it off, and keep using it. Now that's pretty cool because that's a backup plan just in case. Now you're not going to use it in the water on purpose, but you know, the way life is, obviously mistakes and accidents happen and you forget you leave it out in the rain. But the neat thing is, um, you you know, with this uh, uh, IP rating, you can leave it out in the rain. Uh, one of the biggest problems I have, I have 1400 watts of, uh, actually, no, I take that back. I have 14, 15, 16. I have 1600 and 80 watts about a uh, uh, portable solar panel, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight portable solar panels. And th even though they're very nice, they're, they're, they're lightweight, for the most part, two of them are a little heavy. Um, they're about 30 pounds for the big ones. Uh, the problem is when it gets very windy, you have to, you know, like pull them in the house sometimes, or if you have to stake them down, or if it gets rainy, or if it starts to snow, and you're worried about the connections getting a little wet. Uh, even though I um, I put MC4s on all the the ones that didn't have that originally, I believe only uh, I think only two of those uh, very small older ones. You know they have like the um, the USB out kind of things and the barrel. So you know those are converted to, to MC4. But uh, this this is is a whole different uh, style because this puts together the portability of not having to leave something out you could take it camping with you but the rigidness of a rigid panel kind of like the uh, Harbor Freight one and I like I said I uh, you guys know I I've uh, uh, basically uh, supported that panel a hundred percent I have the the uh, the regular hundred watt uh, um, uh, monocrystalline panels and the they, they make the, the the same version except it's a portable briefcase so I took two of their um, 100 watt panels and I bolted them together and basically made a 200 watt solar briefcase but what this does is this makes a 400 watt solar briefcase in about the same size as it would take uh, and ironically in a, about the same weight possibly even a little bit less so you have the durability the rigidity rigidity I cannot I cannot say that word <laughs> durability and rigidness of uh, being able to uh, and the effectiveness of leaving it outside to where you don't have to worry about it. Like I said, that's one of the biggest problems with uh, portable panels is, uh, well, there's one other one that a lot of people tend to forget. People like to remove your solar panel if it's, you know, outside uh, too long. And, you know, if you live in a neighborhood where the kids aren't so nice sometimes, they might take your solar panel. Um, I, I've seen that happen, unfortunately, on YouTube. Um, okay, so it's about 660 bucks. Now, retail, uh, MSRP of this thing is about 1000 bucks. However, it seems expensive, but when you look at what you can do with this thing, it almost makes sense because you don't have to bring it in during the storms. You don't have to worry about it. You, you could either stake it down or use the legs or mount it to a, a fence, like we have those ones mounted to a fence, and then just leave it, you know, set it and forget it. That old, uh, is it Billy, B Billy Mays commercial or whatever. Uh, so you have 13.7 kilograms, which is just under, I believe, 30 pounds. Uh, I'm always off uh, a little bit when I convert those. I uh, <laughs> Metric to, to imperialist, I, I, it always... It always gets me. Uh, super, uh, I'm sorry, superior fiberglass material for decades of reliability. And that's what I mean. So the the many watts that we have, which was, what was it, like 18, like 18, no, 1,680 watts of portable solar panels, and none of them have the durability and the rigidness of these panels. So that is a huge 
upgrade as far as uh, having panels like this. You know, you, where you don't have to worry about it. That's cool. Uh, one minute setup time. It takes a little bit longer. I've seen a few um, reviews on it already. It takes about uh, up to about two minutes. Um, you could do it faster if you do it the way that we do portable panels. If you have a very large array of uh, portable panels, which is a bunch of them that folds up, um, instead of trying to set it up from one side, I've seen everybody make this mistake. Everyone starts on one side, and then the, the awkwardness of the weight makes it tip over by the time it gets to the other side. Do yourself a favor. Stand in the middle of the panel, right? And then you set up the two middle, and then you go each way. Set up one on the other side. It's You take the center of gravity out, and that way you don't have... Uh, that uh, actually you, you, you put the center of gravity back where it belongs, I mean, and then you don't have that awkwardness of all the weight or, you know, 60, 70, 80 percent of the weight on one side leaning, and that always tips it over. So stand in the middle, set up the two legs in the middle, and then work your way outwards from, you know, either side. Just lean one way and do one leg, and then it's, it's much, much easier to, to set these panels up. We have an old video. It's the... Uh, the Pecoron PB300, where we showed you how to set the panels up it, much easier so you don't have to fight that. Uh, like I said, I've I seen reviewers uh, fighting. I saw Jason Wright fighting that, too. He starts on one side. To me, that's a big mistake. Start in the middle and work your way out. It, it's just it's so much less frustrating. Um, so when I see that, I can't help but to giggle because I started that way, too. I started setting them up that way, and, and I, I learned from my mistake. Um, here's your IP rating, guys. IP67, and you had ETFE coding, which means that you can leave it outside during a rainstorm. That's cool. You can't normally do that with solar panels that are portable. There, there are some companies that are starting to make the IP67, but now that you have the rigidness of a, like a rigid panel, right, a hard panel that you could fold up. That, that's man, that's that's such an upgrade. It's such an upgrade, and you get a five-year warranty. That's big on materials and workmanship. Now, what that means, a lot of people misconstrue, uh, misconstrue warranties all the time. Guys, they're written by lawyers for a reason. Uh, materials and workmanship means if they made a mistake in the production or the manufacturing of said product. And the, now I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, I understand warranties fully. And the workmanship means if they were to make a mistake in the building process, one of their employees didn't solder something or the machine didn't solder something correctly, that's the warranty. So just a heads up, guys. If you hook this panel up incorrectly and you burn it out somehow, that is not covered by any warranty that I've seen. And companies will always fight you for that. So just be careful. Um, always learn something before you, you do it. That's the best way, especially with the solar guys. Remember, this is electricity. This could burn down your house. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Um, okay, so you have uh, max power is uh, uh, 400 watts. Now, I've seen it get up in, into the other reviews up to about 350-ish area, which is that's fair. Um, I would like to see, obviously, the 400 like everyone else. But the way they rate these panels, guys, is they rate them in a... A laboratory where every condition is perfect the light the temperature the the wind there's no wind you, you know what I mean so just everything has to be perfect to, for them to get that 400 watt rating uh, and then they bring it in what we call the real world and then you set it up and you go well, I only get 349 watt well that's 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 the game unfortunately because we don't live in a um, uh, laboratory you know in a controlled environment it would be nice if we had weather like that but uh, you know, uh, <laughs> not so lucky. Your short circuit uh, protection current is 11 amps. So once it gets up to 11, it'll shut off for safety. Uh, your your operating current is 10 amps. So that's the most that you're going to normally get out of the panel. And then if it were to short circuit and go haywire, it'll obviously short circuit at 11 amps. So that gives you a little bit of headway there. Uh, here's your series fuse rating, 15 amps. What that is, is if, if you want to put multiple panels together, guys, you should have a 15 amp surge uh, uh, fuse on there just in case if, once again, the panel goes goofy, something like that. The uh, dimensions are 112 inches approximately by about uh, 34 inches by less than an inch. So, guys, that's it's a very long panel. But it's not very tall so when you fold it up into its quads there's four four sections and when you fold it up it gets really really tiny as you see over here you have 28 inches by 30 uh, about 34 by about 3.2 inches guys the neat thing about this is to have a 400 watt panel that is also rated 
for the weather. That's where the big difference is. And it's durable enough to take that, um, you know, that ball being tossed at it or dopping into it or, you know, wh- whatever happens out in the wilderness and the wild and stuff to where, you know, something could, you know, uh, bump it or something like that. So it's it's nice to have a, a, like, foldable panels are great when they're really light, but then they're really bad when they're really light because they flop over so quick and they're, they're, they're too flimsy. You know what I mean? So it's a good and a bad thing. It depends on, you know, what situation is. But for us, we, we do like heavier panels and we'll fight the weight. Uh, that way you get a more durable product. However, if you can't carry 30 pounds, you get the flimsier ones because you can't carry it. So it is what it is. I recommend two smaller panels in series as opposed to one big one that you have trouble carrying. If, if, if you have any trouble carrying with, uh, you know, bad elbows, uh, rotator cuffs, arms, back, you know, knees, you know, things like that. As we get older, it goes very quickly, guys. It, it really does. Uh, some of you young folks that are watching understand that perfectly. Okay, so you got about 30 pounds on the entire setup. Obviously, that excludes the extra cables and the connectors if, if you put that to. But 30 pounds for 400 watts, I think that's very uh, acceptable. Now, especially not to mention that the, the, the durability of it. Now, you can leave it out and you can set it and forget it like the famous, uh, I think it was Billy May. I think it was Billy Mays he used to do the infomercials. Um, here's your open circuit voltages. This is the number one thing you want to check all the time, 100% on any solar panel, is the open circuit voltage, also known as the VOC. That's 47.2 volts. How this works is if your power station can only take up to 48 volts VOC, this should technically be fine. It is technically fine. What we like to do is stay about 5 or 10 volts, if possible, under the the, uh, maximum uh, VOC of your your, uh, charge controller or your power station because that's called headroom. You want to have a little bit of safety just in case. I'll give you a prime example. On a very cold day, and you can watch this. You can put a, a voltmeter on a solar panel. Watch this in real time. When you have a very cold day and it's, you know, cloudy, but very sunny. You know what I mean? Like the big puffy clouds. And as soon as that cloud moves out of the way, your panel will surge because the, you know, the, the sun is like, hey, free energy. And that panel will try to absorb and suck up all that energy and power that it can that it actually goes higher than the rated voltage. And that's why they have the short circuit protection on solar panels and electronics is because of that. I've seen that uh, probably, a, a, I don't know, it seems like a billion times. But uh, you will literally see it go higher than the rated voltage because that's what's known as a power surge. It's the same as when you start a uh, a refrigerator, you get that big power surge and then it calms down. That's kind of what a solar panel does if the sun comes out behind that cloud very quickly. You can literally watch it in real time on a voltmeter. Um, Be careful when you do that, obviously. Uh, Now, here's your optimum, optimum operating voltage. Now, that means that uh, what it's going to come in as when it's charging, it'll drop down to about 40 volts. Now, that's cool because it gets you definitely under that 48. But remember, the VOC of your system, if it was 48, you know, I like to drop it down a little bit more. You don't have to. It's just what we like to do. Maximum system voltage is 600 uh, volts DC. Now, what that means is, say you want to put a bunch of these together in series. You can go up to... 600 volts, which would be approximately 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, about 12 of these panels in a big, huge thing, uh, which would be about 600 volts. Um, who knows how many amps, though, because that, well, actually, yeah, the amps would stay the same. I knew that. Um, so about 600 volts at about 10 amps, that would give you um, lots of power coming in. Um, but that's uh, if, if you want to put them in series and, and you know, things like that. Um, Operating temperature is negative 40 degrees to 185. Now, see, that's where the IP rating and all that special coding and everything comes into play. Guys, negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Do you remember a time in your life that you've ever lived through negative 40? Sorry for people in Antarctica and Alaska and things like that because that seems to be every other weekend. But in the normality of life, you never really see temperatures either way uh, on, on, on that you know, that, that uh, amount of temperature, that, that, that spectrum or that grid. Uh, so th- what that means is you can leave it out as long as you have it hooked to MC4s that are waterproof. Same rating, guys, IP67. And that way you can leave it out all year and you don't have to worry about it. That's cool. I, I, I think that's a huge upgrade for, for f- foldable solar panels. Okay, and then we're going to go back to the pictures real quick, guys, because I, I like to see the pictures. That's my favorite part is the pictures because then you get to see the new products here. 
Um, okay, how do you go to the next one? All right. All right, they got to fix their website here. Okay, so that's what it looks like. It's in four sections. Uh, so basically, you have about a little bit smaller than one of those Harbor Freight solar panels, uh, the 100 watts, if you're familiar with those. So that's the cool thing. The conversion efficiency is it's, it's pretty decent for now, 22.7. I have seen some panels get all the way up to 25%. What that means is if you're bringing in 100% of energy, obviously from the sun, only 25 of it gets converted into usable energy, and then the rest goes to waste. Now, over the years, that has been going steadily up approximately maybe a half to 1%-ish every year, which is a good thing because that's a step in the right directions. To give you an idea, I believe that NASA has right now, if I, if I followed my information correctly here and research, I believe they have panels that are either 40 or up to 45% efficiency rating. And remember, they're in space where they have no clouds blocking that sun. So they get direct rays. So wowie zowie. That, uh, bring them panels down here, NASA. Let us have some of that stuff. Uh, here, durable for decades, obviously with the coating and the IP rating. Now that has a longevity of a panel where the portable panels will definitely fall short because if they're made of some kind of material that could tear, uh, bend, uh, more flimsy, you know what I mean? And these are more rigid panels, kind of like the suitcase design, except it's a super-duper suitcase, if you will. It's a super-duper-duper duper suitcase. There you go. Uh, and then adjustable kickstands. Now, what that does is it allows you to get the maximum power point of where the sun is. So if, the, if, the, if it's like spring or fall, 45 degree angles, depending where you are, of course, is perfect for us. And it gets a you know a very nice angle because the sun is not directly above you and it's not far away. It's kind of in between, and then a, a lot of panels have that where they're not um, you know adjustable. They're kind of preset. You set them and forget them. Now that's where the monocrystalline 100 watt uh, Harbor Freight ones that I always put on a pedestal, those fall short because they have a preset at a certain angle, and I believe that's a 45 or, or very close to 45 degree angle, 40, 40 degree angle, um, where these you can change that and you can up the game a little bit because instead of bringing in, you know, whatever, 80 watts, you could bring in 85 watts per panel, you know, just by moving it maybe an inch or two. It's, it's an unbelievable, amazing amount of power that you can get if you just tilt your panel just a hair. You know what I mean? So while we saw, we use the can trick. I, I, I taught many channels that I, I taught Jason all that. That's a cool thing. It's a, you just take a soup can, you set it on the panel, you aim it towards the sun. It's free because everyone has a can in their house. You can use a soda can, a soup can, a beans, corn, anything you have that's in a can. A coffee can, you set it on there and when the shadow disappears all the way around the can, that means you're perfectly uh, aimed at the sun the best you can obviously without lasers and all the fancy stuff but it's it's very efficient very very good um, let's see what else we got here here's your length now you can see by the size of it now remember it's 30 pounds so it's a little bit long to walk if you're not this this fellow I'm gonna guess is probably about six feet tall being that the panel is about just under three feet and he's probably another three something up here so it's about a six foot guy carrying it just to give you an idea some folks have trouble with the panels are too long because they drag on the ground um, when you uh, you know you walk with them and stuff. Now it looks like there's fabric here, okay? Which there is. But the neat thing, and they thought about this. I thought great idea and a good way to keep it light. This is actually a pouch. It's a super big fanny pack, if you will, with another pouch here for the cable. So once you fold up these four things, and it has the two handles here, you basically put this pouch, or you put them in the pouch, put the cables in the bag, and now you have a very good protection so they don't get scratched up when you travel. You know, that's a big thing with solar panels is you don't want them to get scratched up because that could take away some of that power coming in. All right, so the next one here, um, this is the fiberglass reinforced material. So now you don't have uh, glass. It's, it's much harder to break fiberglass uh, and split fiberglass than it is glass, of course. Here's your corrosion resistance, five-year warranty. I think that's fantastic. But remember, the warranty is covered by the manufacturing and production of the product itself, the item itself, not misuse or mishandling of a product. 
aluminum alloy frame, which means you don't have to worry about it rusting and getting all nasty over the years. Sturdy and flat is what I was referring to as far as you can set it and forget it. That's a great thing. If you put a few of these in the backyard and just have that solid thing. Another big thing with, uh, not to jump all over, but that's what I do. Uh, another huge thing with this is anytime you set a panel on the ground and it's not permanently installed on a structure or anything, guys, 99% of the time you don't need a permit for it. So that's cool. Plus, you can take them down in a second if you have to. So that's a cool thing. If a really bad storm comes in, you fold them up, you put them away. If hail comes, that is a big thing. I don't know if you guys saw what happened. I believe it was, I think it was Texas. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it was Texas where they have what's known as a solar farm. A solar farm is a crazy amount of solar panels. I'm talking four or five hundred watt panels times like a thousand or two thousand. It looks like football fields full of solar panels. And believe me they're bringing in the amps and the voltage holy cow am i jealous they're bringing in enough power to run small cities and towns i mean that's a ton of power dangerous too but um the neat thing is uh or actually the unneat thing was there was a huge hailstorm okay and the solar company that installed it had to use their insurance and they lost millions of dollars because obviously the hail was big enough to shatter all or not all probably about 60 70 percent of all the uh, panels that were out there and boy that's that's it was so depressing to see that guys it was so sad hopefully the insurance will take care of that and you can get back up and running but nobody wants to see that happen to anybody uh i don't care if you got one 10 watt panel or like they have thousands of you know five four or five hundred watt panels that's that's really sad to see and then here you have a 10-year power warranty. Now, what that is, is that's a different kind of warranty than the manufacturing warranty, and that's why it's longer. The power warranty means that they guarantee a certain amount of output power for at least 10 years before it starts degrading. That's a different warranty, so always keep that in mind, guys. And then you have here... Um, uh, this is where they're kind of making fun of. This looks like the, the EcoFlow. I'm not sure, but it looks like the EcoFlow here, uh, which is a nice panel in itself, but as far as the, the rigidness and the, the, the durability now. So prone to damage, and that's what I was referring to. When the panels are, are very uh, flexible, you can accidentally bend them and break them by, by uh, you know, it's, say you put them in a trailer or an RV or a van or a car, and you go on vacation, and something smushes it, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, something smushes it and kind of mushes it up against the side. You could break, crack, or bend uh, uh, one of these solar panels. Uh, they only gave you a one-year warranty, according to here. I can't confirm that or not. Uh, laminated frame means it's not protected with the, uh, uh, you know, the elements outside and everything. And then flimsy and sagging. Oh, that's a huge thing I forgot about, guys. So, and and I've seen this firsthand. Another huge thing, another huge problem with portable solar panels, as nice as they are, is the sagability of them, if that's even a word. So what happens is over time, sitting in that cold or that immense heat, the fabric kind of gets loose. You know what I mean? So what happens is the panel kind of bows in the middle. You've seen that on a lot. EcoFlow, I've seen it firsthand, where the panel would kind of bow, and any time that you bow a panel you're not getting a hundred percent output because you're adjusting the angles of the sides away from the sun so you know almost like a uh, when you look into a, a spoon, you, you have that kind of bowl shape. That's what happens to uh, these in, in a long time or depending if you let them sit in the rain too long and they're not, you know, uh, uh, you know, like uh, ready for power like that and stuff. It, it can really hurt them quick. And then rapidly diminished power output. I haven't seen that yet, but I've only had mine for a few years. Obviously, I've had, like I said, I got two, four, six, eight. I've got eight panels right here above my head. And, um, and they're not on, of course, they're not up, but uh, they're, they're stored away here for an emergency. And um, I, I haven't seen anything other than, like I said, when you walk with them, they kind of drag on the ground if you're not tall. So uh, the, it kind of you know scuffs and scratches the bottom. So that's just something to be uh, aware of here. And let's see here. Now that's kind of the size of it. I do like the all black frame. I don't like the solar, you know, the traditional solar panel look. I never was a fan of that. Even as a kid, even though I was fascinated by the technology. Um, actually, I was an adult before solar panels came out, really. But anyway, um, 
they look like grandpa solar panels. Like when you go past the farm, you know, or you see the city, they put one up to the, the uh, lights or the speed trap or, you know, whatever they're using it for, uh, the emergency signs. They look like solar panels, and I never like that because it's, uh, it's the obvious. It's an eyesore. Now they're getting much more streamlined, guys, where they can mix into the, either the roof of your house or when you set them on the grass. It doesn't look so obvious. I'm, you know, obviously you have something sitting on the grass. But most people, matter of fact, I, I, a prime example, okay, so I, I had 1,600 watts sitting on the fence. You guys remember the video. 1,600 watts, four big panels. For, that's an emergency setup just in case, right? So basically, I had a contractor here, right? And he looks and he goes, what's that? Now, for someone that's in the, the, uh, the trades, okay, and doesn't know what a solar panel is when they don't look like a solar panel, that's exactly what I'm going for. If you don't know what it is, You'll leave it alone for the most part because you don't know what it is, if it's worth money or not. It could be just a piece of building stuff, you know, sitting on, on the side of, uh, you know, the fence. So the neat thing is I had to explain to him, a contractor of 20 years, that is a new version of a solar panel that's all black. So you don't know it's a solar panel. It's designed to kind of mesh into the background so it doesn't have that eyesore. Uh, very, very cool that he didn't know that. And, you know, he was being honest with that, too. He's like, what's that? And I was like, that's that's 1,600 watts of solar panel, about the same as what you get on an average outlet on a good day. So that's really cool. Here's your IP67 rating, guys. That's a huge thing. Obviously, you can have, you see how this water is pooling on here? Um, that is a very dangerous thing if you have a soakable um uh, portable panel and water pools on it that could be very dangerous guys because as we all know water and electricity are not friends they never have been and they never will so on a rigid panel even though it still can be quote unquote dangerous it's much more protected that way so the water doesn't get into the electricity because remember as soon as electricity touches water it goes right through it there is uh, <laughs> free free will free game right there okay so here's your MC4s and here's your adjustable little panels on the back um, here's your aluminum frame so you have a, a, a very decent and notice the back guys all black I like that now all black will heat up more yes that's true it'll heat up more and collect the temperature more however I'll take that over the obvious view of the solar panels like the Harbor Freight ones they just look like solar panels uh, here's your MC4 connectors guys these are IP67 waterproof these are the only ones that I use they're industry standard everybody use them because of the rating of it's safer in bad conditions that's why you use them there's a lot of other ports out there guys people you know they swear by them I use MC4s it's, until something that I find better I use MC4s and in the house I really like to use XT60 that's my can hey, you know everyone has a favorite that's my favorite okay so the next one let's see the pictures here um, this is kind of what you can use it for obviously portable power stations your house vehicles batteries and whatnot um, let's see here's the setup now, okay so th this is a prime example of what I see everybody doing what I believe is incorrect by setting up these panels notice how much pressure is on this side of the panel Jason Oy did this in his video shame on you Jason Oy. you know better than this okay so this side of the panel has a lot of pressure on these joints right here now that's where the cables are right that's where your wires run through and if this bows down far enough because he's trying to set up one side at a time if he stood in the middle right here set up these two while holding you know this against your body set up the two centers that takes that pressure off the other side if you want to test this and you don't have any solar panels I will show you how it's an immense amount of power and pressure on something when you hold it that way take a standard broom or a 2x4 hold it up from the middle of the broom with a 2x4 doesn't weigh anything right now set it on the ground pick it up from one of the ends and try to pick it up look at the pressure of uh, on your wrist it literally feels like it's gonna break your wrist on a 2x4 that's 8 feet long it's hard to pick up that's what you're doing to all these connections when you set it up this way um, I've noticed this over the years with with mine that I learned that right away um, f physics is your friend guys uh, especially when you're not big and strong I'm getting older so I don't have any muscles anymore so what happens is you find better ways to do stuff prime example Bruce Lee right little tiny guy five foot nothing I would never want to fight the man the guy had physics and an understanding of weight distribution and pressure pinpoints and all this he understood that he was small so he used physics 
to his his uh, advantage, obviously. And you could see him in in all kinds of things, and he would you know whoop these six foot eight guys. Uh, I know it was a movie, but remember Game of Death when he he fought uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, you know, and. Uh, he said, I, I don't have to, you know, kick you in the face. I'll just bring you down here, and then I'll kick you in the face. Physics, right? You bring you bring a big tree down, and then you chop it up on the ground. It's much easier than going up there and chopping it down piece by piece. Bring the whole thing down to where you're at, and then chop it up. Bruce Lee style, right? Okay, so uh, big thing, big thing. Um, and then here, this is the size of your, uh, your panels. These look like about 16-inch rims here, guys. That's about a 6-foot guy. And then there's your panel. Now, you notice that you see how they're they're uneven, guys. This is what I mean about the foldable panels. Now, these would be even if you would set them up correctly. So what happens is with foldable panels that are not rigid, they'll start to do this over time, and that will eat away at your power in uh, your, uh, your your power input because you're aiming at all. Uh, uh, here's here's a good word for, for us old timers out there, guys. From the, from for you that are from the hills or anything, uh, Cy Goglin. If you guys know what Cy Goglin is, put it in the comment section. I'd love to know who knows what that means. But it's all Cy Goglin. So that's uh, uh, definitely a hillbilly term there for sure. If you know what that is, I'd love to hear about it. Okay, beautiful looking panels, guys. Look at straightforward two two handles. That way, if one fails, you got a backup. And then uh, let's see what else we got here. 400 watts. There's all the goodies here. Five uh, five year warranty. Remember, you do get a 10 year warranty according to the website for uh, the power output. Here's your your uh, in, uh, efficiency, which is going up every year, guys. I can't wait till this gets to 40, 50, 60 percent, um, like like NASA has. And boy, we can bring some some good stuff here. Uh, oh, and this is a very big thing too. So as you can see by by this, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here, so you can see this here. Okay. Because uh, this picture doesn't get any bigger, so let me uh, make it bigger. So notice that these are your connection points, okay? And these are your cables. So basically, these are all wired together, probably in parallel, it looks like. So, uh, uh, actually, wait, yeah, you put probably parallel. I, I'm not sure, but I think they're parallel. So uh, what happens is, after you bend this, bend this, bend this, bend this, uh, they've tested it up to 3,000 plus folds. And here's a trick, guys. If you fold up your stuff nicer, I'm a sound guy. If you put your stuff away nicer, it'll last much, much longer and probably well past the 3,000 folds. If you just slap it together and throw it in the back of your car and you, you know, throw it on the ground, well, obviously, you're going to you know, knock down those, those folds because you're not treating them good. So think of how many things, you know, your car, uh, your car door, if you slam your car door, obviously, you're going to burn it out a lot faster than it's designed for. Because, you know, you slam the door and you kick it open. You, slam, you know, it's uh, wear and tear is, uh, is a big thing. Okay, now, th this is how to set it up, guys. Okay, so when he plops it out there, see? There you go. Now, notice now notice in this video, guys, I'm going to pause it right here. Hold on, let me pause it. I want to I want to bring my point to the table here. Now, notice when he's setting it up now. Notice he's setting it up correctly now. He's in the middle doing the middle first and then doing the outside. That's what I'm referring to, guys. Set up your panels this way and you'll thank me later. It's a really, really helpful little tip that I found out the hard way because I got tired of having one side of it fall on the ground every time you set up the other side. So start in the middle and work your way out. And that way, you're, you're, you're even if you're short, you're, you're still long enough to reach that other leg on each side and set it up without letting go of the center of it. That helps. Physics is our friend, guys. Okay, now, and... Uh, Here's your here's your panels here. A nice black back, um, and these are uh, aluminum alloy legs. Nice, they're they're uh, actually bolted on there, probably riveted on there, but uh, very very nice. Uh, that way they won't get all dirty. And you can have the they they uh, they call them solar stakes. I don't know if you guys have ever seen them. You can use tent stakes too. They're like a dollar, you know. Or if you have an old tent in the basement, grab it out, grab the stakes out of there, and use it. You could pu uh, push the, the the tent stake down through the leg and that will hold it on the ground that way if you have a big wind come it'll it'll hold it down and be more uh, secure so that, that that won't cost you anything guys I'm, I'm a big fan of saving some money right let's see here's rv and here's shed what does this do oh i see okay so this is basically setting it up where you have your your battery charger and then your batteries here and then your solar panels if you want to do series or just one big one they're kind of showing you that this this uh, fella can have uh, this come in on one side of a charge controller and then this one and bas basically uh, this is series into parallel and then this is just standard so then you take this parallel and this parallel and make them 
uh, I'm sorry, this series and this parallel and make them parallel in the controller as long as they're about the same. Uh, you you want to get about the same voltage and about the same power, otherwise you start having problems. But uh, that, that, that this is a very cool little uh, 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 a little schematic here to kind of show you how you can use different size solar panels. I recommend, guys, if you're going to do it, you see, notice it says for reference only because you can have a lot of problems if you put a 400 watt panel like 200s and one's really low voltage and one's high or the amps are, you can run into a lot of problems. You want to get the specs as absolutely uh, the same as possible for all all the panels. So. Uh, do this with caution guys and that's why they put this here do this with caution the reference only um, let's see here uh, you can see how clean it looks right it, it just doesn't look like a solar panel anymore and they're getting more and more black if they can figure out a way to do the bus bars in black some companies have uh, would be really really cool to see an all black solar panel but remember all black gets hotter faster uh, let's see here's your, your setup on the tent site as you can see it's not so uh, invasive here's the centers where the folds are um, and then here's your main so yeah it looks it looks like uh, um, let's see it, it, that looks like it, parallel yep yep red 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 that's all parallel so that way you got 400 watts at 10 amps at, at parallel um, let's see here here's your 10 10 plus years of uh, power solutions here uh, that means the company's been doing this stuff for more than a decade 490,000 registered people in their community for Managee. So it's obviously a big company. Five-year warranty, that's nice. That's 60 months, guys. Same as a car um, or payments on a car. And then you have 24-hour prompt response. Now, I've never had to use Renegy's, uh customer service, but I, I, I do like this. I like this. 24-hour means if you have a question, we're here 24 hours to help you. That's cool. I haven't used it, so I haven't tested it, but that's cool to see that because at least that gives you uh, a, a positivity about the product that you <laughs> you want to buy. You know, um, these are awesome too, guys. We'll go 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 back. This one right here, boy, I want to get some of those. 550 watt for uh, about 400 and six, about 460, 470, 480 a piece here, guys. Those are monster panels, but notice they look like solar panels, guys. I wish they would make them an all black. Um, like those, um, uh, the REC panels that I got. They're, they're nice and black like this, so they don't look so obvious. All right, well, that's the first look, guys. I just, I really wanted to bring this to more people's attention because I really believe that this could be an, a big upgrade for <coughs> for a lot of people that want something portable, but they want to take it to the beach. They want to take it to a place where it's dirty, rocky. And then you can take your hose and you just hose them down. They're waterproof, right? They're IP67, so you can hit them all day with, with the, and clean them off properly. And then you'll have a better, longer-lasting longer solar panel. I do like portable panels, don't get me wrong. But if they could make portable panels like this... Boy, that's a huge upgrade, guys. Huge upgrade. All right. Well, if you want to check this out, I'll leave a link in the description. Feel free to check them out. Uh, it doesn't cost anything to look, obviously. So feel free to go have fun. Uh, any, anything that we always see that is exciting and new and different and possibly a, a big upgrade for our, our Scriber family, we always try to bring it to the attention of people because there's so many items out there that holy crabzilla you can't know them all you just can't you got to watch 50 review channels like we do every day and that way you can literally find stuff that you had no idea about because they're not advertising it to the fullest uh, potential if you will so that's i guess that's where we come in is when we make these review videos people can kind of see what's out there is that good for me or is it not good this panel might be junk for some people and it might be the, the, the bee's knees or the cat's meow for the next person. All right, guys, don't forget Cy Goglin. If you know what that means, put it in the comment section. I'd love to hear uh, any, any history buffs on, on old terminology. All right, guys, ramble on. Be safe. If you're not a subscriber, get up there. Hit that button. We need you here. We need more team members to figure out all about this stuff. All right, guys, see you next time on Rambling Bob Reviews. Bye, guys.